Hi, Stuart here. Today we're going to do a quick demo of using HashiCorp Vault as a configuration source as part of our ongoing series on 12-factor practices. So the 12-factor practice we're going to focus on today is number three, store configuration in the environment. And I think uh, it's important to point out why I'm using HashiCorp Vault for this demo. It's because I've used HashiCorp Vault before and I'm comfortable with it. But in all honesty, there are lots of really good secrets management tools out there. Um, I like this one, the demos on this one, but you could take the ideas that I have and extend them to the tool of your choice. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? Well, the problem we're trying to solve is we don't want to deploy configuration uh, from continuous integration. In other words, uh, when we have a continuous integration build and we end up having build artifacts, what we don't want to have happen um, is those build artifacts to be full of secrets and configuration files and things like that. We don't want the CD engine to have to sort out um, which uh, file there is and so on, do transformations, right? Configuration goes with the environment. And the easiest way to do that um, is to set some, some basic uh, environment variables on the host during the deploy and deploy the, the process from the build artifacts. And then, you know, when the deployed application starts is to reach out to a sequence and configuration store um, give it some of the environment variables and uh, get the values back, right? That's the ideal thing to do. So uh, we're going to do this locally using the developer edition of HashiCorp Vault. And let me just be the first to say it um, on this video. But if you go read their documentation, or indeed you go out to their Docker site and you look at their Docker image, the first thing they tell you is to only use the developer edition for doing developer tasks. And since I'm doing this modeling it as a developer would um, in my Visual Studio, right? I'm going to use uh, HashiCorp Vault running in my Docker on my local desktop into which um, I will manage configuration and then I will have some application code that runs and reads the environment variables and then uses that to call my HashiCorp vault and get back my actual configuration for the rest of my application. But again, uh, normally what you would do is work with your IT department and they would set up a secrets manager um, you would have some sort of configuration management best practice around making sure that the secrets for each environment were pushed correctly. You'd work with your DevOps group to make sure your CD engine is injecting the required environment variables. And, you know, we can make this even more complicated uh, by having our process use a service discovery engine like console but we're just going to make this super simple. And so the environment variables that we're going to inject in are going to be the URL to our secrets configuration server, uh, the appropriate uh, credentials, and uh, the relative path to where the key store is for our application, the application name, and the environment that we're in. And typically, those things are frequently part of the metadata of your environment itself. So if you're in Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry or an Azure app hosting, uh, those are environment variables that were uh, set when that hosting was provisioned. So again, configuration goes with the environment, not with the code. So you can see here that we are in Git Bash that we're in clone of the repository, my demo repository. Uh, here we see uh, the various Visual Studio parts of my uh, solution and the readme and the license file and so on. And so we'll go ahead and CD into the scripts folder. And you can see that we have some uh, bash scripts. And so the first thing I'm going to do is 
uh, start the Docker Vault itself. My Docker is up and running, and I can prove that my HashCore Vault is running. As you can see, it's running happily. So the next thing I want to do is, when the Docker container starts for the first time, it uses the in-memory configuration store. So is do what my DevOps team would do, and that is script into my vault configuration the environment settings for my application. And if we look at the directory again, you can see that we have a little JSON file. I like doing my configuration as JSON, and you can see that I have three uh, dummy key value pairs that in theory could represent anything, connection strings or whatever. And so let's take a look at my script settings that I selected. And you can see uh, what I did is I'm using the vault CLI and I'm calling key value put store. And then I'm saying at, which is use this file and into the store it goes. It will happily vault these settings into my running instance. And you can see that I asked it to kick out the uh, the output of my command and it kicks back out that it happily ensconced it. So the first thing I want to do because I'm in dev is I want to essentially e inject into uh, my my Visual Studio environment the environment variables that I have set up for use with to find my vault instance. And so I have a vault URL, I have an environment, I have an application variable, I have a token, I have a, a root path and so on. The next thing that needs to happen is of course I need to modify my startup. And since I'm in .NET Core 3.1 long-term support, uh, this will look pretty familiar. So we have our configure services and we have our configuration builder. And notice here that I said I wanted to add environment variables and I am calling add vault and injecting in a logger and a configuration. And I'm uh, putting the configuration in as a singleton and I'm adding controllers with views because this is a little web app. And that's basically all I had to do. So the question is, what is the magic inside of add vault? So let's go take a look at it. So add vault is using the builder pattern. In other words, we created a static overload to extend uh, iConfiguration Builder. And so the first argument is, of course, this iConfiguration Builder of Builder. And then I decided that I wanted a logger instance, and of course, I need to have the environment variables that were configured so that I can then use those to build up a vault request. Inside my little helper, uh, I check to make sure some things are true. Uh, and then I fire up an instance of my vault configuration object model, which I'm gonna pass to the actual vault library, which we'll take a look at in a second. Uh, I do some basic validations, and in all my configuration builders where I'm trying to build from configuration, I always expose a method called parse configuration field, and I pass it in the name of the value. In it, I have a very simple little void helper that says, okay, well, if it's this, it goes in this value, and so on, right? It literally maps. And you could use uh, potentially AutoMapper or some other tool for this, in this case, I'm only looking for five environment variables. So now that I've built up my configuration and I have fired up the vault configure client, I can call helper settings get, and I will end up with a dictionary of key value pairs. And I can spin through those and build a, a key value pair collection. And then I can add that in as an in-memory collection, part of my configuration builder, and builder returns and continues to add whatever other building steps there are. But you can see it's very basic. And so if we go look at the mechanics of settings get, it's even more basic. Create a dictionary object. I make an instance of my 
HTTP client, which of course I'm going to do from HTTP client. I'm going to configure the appropriate subpath. My configuration object is how to create a well-formed subpath. And so I'm then I get the response. If it's a happy response, I parse the resulting JSON that gets back. In this case, I'm actually kind of old school. I'm using the Newton soft parser. And you can see I'm building up my dictionary, which I then return at the bottom of the method. So that's it. That's all I needed to do. And since most of this heavy lifting is done uh, for you by the little library that we expose, you're more than welcome to grab that and use it. So if I run my website, uh, my website has exactly one page, a home page. And on the home page, I, I simply enumerate uh, I configuration and I dump all of the configuration and you can see that I got the vault labeled keys and values from the environment and I got from vault itself my expected key one, key two, key three, et cetera. Uh, developers shouldn't manage secrets management anyway. That is a proper function of IT, networking, cloud operations, DevOps, whoever owns your network fundamentals in your organization should own that. Thanks for your kind attention. As always, you can find the demo code on my GitHub site.